Tuesday, November 7th, market analysis. Stan Ehrlich, good morning, 951 California time. <clears throat> and we have a little bit more of a rally. And I'm stressing a little. Well, at the moment, the spider is only up 70 cents, not even a full point. The DIA is a quarter of a point higher, and the Qs are a little bit different story. They jumped 316 at the moment, and you'll see they got overbought. That's exactly what I wanted before a downside correction, which I think is about to start. But I may have said that yesterday and the day before, too. But no particular upside momentum. You can see that the highs are just a little bit higher or not yesterday. And we really seem to be running out of steam. No surprise. We're very close to oversold, uh, my custom RSI and so on. Oh, by the way, before I forget, if anybody's interested in having me analyze a specific symbol, assuming I can get it with my data feeds, et cetera, send me an email, info at ersignals.com. That's info at ersignals.com. And I'll see what I can do. And I enjoy analyzing stuff that people pop at me at oh, 150 or so seminars I've done around the world and mostly the 80s and 90s and 2000, early 2000s. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. Now, <clears throat> as I've been saying the last couple of days, looks like we've gone too far, too quick, too much. And in at least the case of Qs, we got overbought. We got very close to it here. And we're very close to an area of resistance. It's a classic spot for it to start flipping back a bit. And if it does, well, I have other stories to tell, uh, but I'm, I'm going to need another few days or a week or so to um, gently start talking about that bullish formation. You know which one. So the next one is the spider, same chart, basically. But the S&P, E-mini, et cetera, futures contracts are open a lot longer, and therefore gaps are much more rare. But with the regular historical standard markets, California, that would be 6.30 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we have gaps. And we have three gaps up in the S&P, Spider, SPY. I think the highest gap is going to be easily closed and maybe, who knows, today? But... This is Tuesday, so I think this week. Now, I'm not ruling out the second largest gap around the middle of a <clears throat> big rally that we have had. You realize we've been up one, two, three, four, five, six. Today's the seventh day in a row since that oversold condition in support. And now the October lows. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's get rid of that little thingy. Good, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm expecting a correction. Should have one. Looks like we're starting one. Not really very weak yet, but I think so. Something going on somewhere else. And if this persists, I'll have to do something about that. All right, so next chart. This is the one minute chart, sorry, on uh, the S&P 500 spider. You can see that it's flattened out sort of mostly on Friday and then a little bit yesterday, Monday, uh, really not making any headway. And the headway we did make this morning doesn't look particularly great, but you did rally into a new high ground and the downside correction an hour or so ago has held around where you would expect it to hold right around the highs of the previous two days. If it starts sinking, and if we start to make new lows, we could easily have an outside down day, bearish engulfing, extremely close to overbought conditions, and that would cause me to scream bloody murder. Here are the cues, the daily vertical bar chart. We punched our way through the major, only major bear trend line we've got, um, except for maybe the historic highs back in January, I think, or November of 21-22. So, uh, that's 2021 and 2022. So 
looks like it's about to turn back down. We're, we challenged the previous high here of October 12th. What can I say? It's prime territory for a dip back down. My best shot is 357.80, and that is the closure of the middle gap. This one's very small. Not that that is, you know, makes it less important. Uh, I just don't think it's going to get closed. I do want to point out, though, that this gap here at about 351 and the third is almost exactly the same price as the low that we had on September 29th. A little bit of a clue there in the days and maybe a couple of weeks to come. Next is the NASDAQ futures contract. Eh, futures contract, no gaps at all. Punch through the bear trend line. Not quite, but super close to being overbought. In fact, my RSI got up to 74 74.45, and I like 75 or higher, the little red line, uh, to be quote unquote overbought in my book. So I, I'm, I'm ready for a correction. <clears throat> DIA, gaps to close, two of them, not quite three. And the one that's in the uh, middle percentage retracement, 50%, give or take, looks most likely 333 and change. Okay, so the Russell is the huge unbelievable support area tested last week and it made actually new lows for three years almost exactly but by a very little bit didn't stay there but one or two days or so and popped right back up dramatically with everything else so that is a gigantic i haven't don't remember seeing a support area that important for well i don't know decades so Closing the uh, lower gap is possible, but look here, even today and yesterday, the higher gap has already been mostly closed. So if I'm going to close other gaps on the other charts I just showed you, then this is going to be weaker, quicker, it looks like, and come down and close that gap at 165.70-ish. All right, let's go to the uh, quickie October lows chart, which I've been showing you for weeks and weeks now, um, the October lows now have three times in 31 years, not a low in October. That is one heck of a percentage, 90 plus percent likely, uh, or, or track record, put, put it that way. Now I pinpointed a day and a time. I got my price fairly close. I missed by about a point and a half. Uh, and I started doing that way back uh, here when the breakout took place, or maybe even a little bit before that, because if it was going to happen, it was obvious what the downside objective should have been. But my timing was off a couple of weeks. So eh, not, not terrible, but uh, not quite what I was hoping for. And lastly, the oh, oh, spider. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Going to futures now. Here we go. Just a different perspective on the E-mini support area. You can see all of these tops and bottoms are very close to the same price over a significant amount of time. And the same for these lows, although I don't like the lows quite as much as those highs. Nevertheless, we're through it, way above it, getting back up into the same price range uh, that we were only a few weeks ago and a higher high today but super close to overbought. As a matter of fact, equally as much or a little more than the last time we were at this price and the last time we topped out a little bit higher. Wow, okay, next chart, NASDAQ futures oversold, bounce better, quicker, faster than I expected, but not totally surprised. And now above the major bear trend line, we should stay there if this is going to maintain an incredible number of days in a row from a new low for months. The last time it was down there was May. And of course, it was just a couple of weeks ago. And finally, the bonds. I am still thinking that we could come back into this circle, kind of like the circle I did for the um, October low chart. So if it does that, but it's going to take a quick break, a quick sharp break, <clears throat> and I'll get something out of this to say a lot about. But for the moment, it got overbought. 
pulled back for a day and today we're coming right back up again looking pretty good although i'm thinking it should have a little more problem and drop back into this area and that'll cause me a lot of excitement along with the 10-year notes which got overbought same kind of a pullback would apply and then up up and away we go next chart crude oil oh support did not hold i thought it wouldn't and kaboom so uh not super close to oversold but getting there the next stop should be somewhere in the ballpark of 73 in a small number 73 30 40 20 something like that the beginning of this uh, support zone and it might even get as low if it can get there so quickly 66 and a half but to do that Look at the amount of move down it would have to have. And we're now already down to almost we're 29. So traditionally, 30 and 70 are Wells Wilder's overbought and oversold levels. And I learned RSI from Wells himself and stochastics from George Lane, an old friend of mine, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I was on the international lecture circuit in the late 70s, throughout the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And then I did stuff for online trading academy, blah, blah, blah. Next, natural gas. Whoa, new lows by a chunk. Now seriously close to oversold, 29.80. And nearing the bottom of a support area. It's about to bottom out. We have a gap to go back up and close at 3.4 and a half. So 3.450. Uh, looks highly likely I'm going to give it a week, maybe two, to go back to close that gap. And we should be starting to turn around. Well, hell, today could be the low. Next, heating oil. New lows, few weeks in a broad area of support. But the big problem here is look at this market. Heating oil has had a heck of a time trying to maintain any new highs. Every time it's done it, it's pulled back quite a bit. Here we had a bearish engulfing ER sales signal on top. Here we have one two days off the exact highest high, very, very close. Here we have one at the beginning of a three or four day downside move. And here, number four, we have the beginning of a very big move down. Took a little longer. And the green at the bottom. Too bad we didn't get one here. Eh. Can never make the market do what you want it to do. You always have to move with it. So. I'm not going to be terribly surprised if this is going to be a really good top formation. I've been alluding to this before, this rally high a couple of days ago. This is a first shoulder high and a second shoulder high. That's the head of the formation. This is going to look a couple of pipples on the neck. It's not really that important. The whole thing you could call a head. That's the first shoulder of the uh, right-hand side. And there's the second one. A few days ago, we have a new low sense. There's the neckline I drew two, three weeks ago. If we break below that, and I'll do this for you real quick. So I get, grab a drawing tool. They're there in all kinds of technical analysis programs. And I plop the beginning of it at the highest high and drop it down to where the neckline is. So that's called the depth of the formation. Grab the line and drop it right below the breakout, wherever you think it might be in a few days, it's going to be a little bit cheaper, but nah, not that big a deal. Here it is. My minimum downside objective, if this pattern is correct, would be, um, eh, let's call it uh, uh, 2.1. Very, very close. And guess what, gentlemen and ladies, we've got a major, major support area in that ballpark area. No shocker. So I'm going to leave my little little uh, downside objective line here. I might shift it to the right a little bit in a couple of days. But so far, can't help it. It's doing what I thought it might. And I said so before it did it. Next, gold. Aha. We almost got the top of the market there. We did get the market bottom right there. We got the market bottom right there. We got the top of the market right there. Eh. And some other pretty good signals, but they're not the highest high and lowest low for the break, which is why I developed the red and green signals. That's the ER signals. Now, new low, probable new low close since my bearish signal, which was only about six days ago or so. Uh, we're on our way down. We even got an ER3 at the red dot filled. 
looking great. You had a second chance to do it a couple of days later ago, a couple of days ago, and uh, after the first potential fill. I'm looking for a move down enough to close this gap at uh, 1850 It ain't going to be today. I'm thinking two weeks. Next chart, silver. And self-signal involved in the topping out process. I'm kind of disappointed in those things, but they do happen. And it gives you a clue, but it's not a profitable signal. That was a profitable signal. Again, buy, sell, sell, buy. And the double top in silver had both of them evolve into an ER sell signal. Wow. We got both highs. And what I like to call a complementary sell signal. And that was way back in May when I was using that little phrase. And the bottom of the market back there. Next chart. Oh, I'm sorry. Silver. Um, heck, I don't I can't rule out coming down to 20.75. Why not? We're not very close to oversold whatsoever. It just has to break below the support area. I think it can do it. Look at the trend here ever since April. Lower lows, lower highs. Next chart. Platinum. We got overbought, but we didn't get a sell signal on the high. Too bad. Got a buy signal on the bottom. Bottom again. Top. Bottom. So how low can she go? Uh, I think very possibly 860. And we're <laughs> already halfway there. So that wouldn't be that much of a stretch. We're nowhere near oversold at 37. So elbow room. Next chart. High-grade copper. Overbought just barely yesterday, but, you know, overbought. And down today, but it's not any kind of a big move down. It's just a little bit of a new lows for a couple of days. And there's no bullish damage done or anything I can hang my hat on here. It does look like it's going to start to dribble off and make progress on the downside. And I've got to fall back on lower highs over time. We got that top. We got that bottom, almost that bottom, a little bit of a rally in here. Yeah, those were not good. But as far as signals, nothing at the moment. And yes, it could challenge completely and even make new lows for a full year. Wouldn't be surprised. Next chart, soybeans. Aha. Hey, we got the bottom. We got an ER1, which is all filled the day of the signal the er3 is the green dots or red if it's a sell signal and we got almost the exact low of the day the next day there has never been a closing price it was a loss on this trade so far er1 or er3 some of the if you were using the strategy and the default numbers you're more likely not going to get stopped out in here but i believe i probably um rigged this so my stop was a lot slower and i did okay so uh that means we survived this downside correction and now it's doing outstandingly well that should be right there so i like what i see we might be getting stopped out in a day or two because it did get overbought and it will be in a very good trade in the uh, in the end um we are still short soybean oil. I forecasted this head and shoulder top in advance. We got the blast rally high with a bearish bullish. I'm sorry, that was a bad trade. I remember this. Nah, uh, very misleading. But the timing was right for shoulder high and why we had an outside up day. You can never make the market do, et cetera. So anyway, that is the shoulder high, but it's just, huh, the wrong kind of price action. Down we came as far as the pattern broke out to the downside, had a couple other bad signals on the way down, but this one was a good one. And it caused the rally back up to the neckline almost completely. And here we are, new low ground completely. And that should be right there. And I'm liking the way this is acting. I think it's going to drop into new low ground again. How low can you go? Maybe now that I'm not seeing any reason for it to bottom out uh, yet, we did get oversold. We did get down to 50. 
like I forecasted. And uh, that's about it. Let's see it start to rally if I'm going to talk about bullish potentials. I can't. Next chart. Soybean meal. Punch the resistance. Didn't stay there at this moment. That's not particularly bullish. We may very well be starting the downside swing here. We were overbought for several days in the same ballpark price range and stopped right at the top of resistance. Pulled back, had a bearish engulfing that did not work. Sometimes they're part of and not the highest high in a top formation. I love it when we get green smack dab on the lowest low, which we did on October 27th of 22. Not that many major turning points in a soybean meal. So I think it's topping out. If I were long, I'd be tightening my stops. Next, corn. Buy signal two days ago. Ooh, okay, so our stop was 467 and six eighths, three quarters. Today's low is. 468 and three quarters, we did not get hit. We are still long from the ER1 and ER3, ER3 today, and it's not doing very well. If you were convinced that this is going to be a good signal, it hasn't been voided yet, but it's very close, you might want to be a buyer here and risk a couple of pennies, really, is what it boils down to. Uh, if you're right, then you've picked the low tick almost exactly. Uh, or you might want to wait until there's a little bit of a rally before you jump in. But this is where it takes a little bit of a guts. Uh, but obviously, it's coming very, very close to stopping us out with a small loss. Next chart, wheat. Yeah. Outside down day, bearish engulfing, implies it's going to come down. Been talking about it going down, down, down for months no change. Looking for new lows soon. Okay. Live cattle. I'm not sure what to say. Um, resistance in a general sense stopped the rally. It did go up and close a gap. And I'm looking for this market to come down and test the previous lows for the break, which would be around 177. Um the longer term picture, if we close below 177, is going to turn very bearish. It may have started a big bear move, which we got the top of the market, I believe, to the exact day and the highest high, or it's so close it doesn't matter. That's blatantly obvious, the highest high. And that one, this was almost, almost, and we got almost the bottom. Anyway, too sure about this. Looks like it's going to continue south. Next, live hogs. We are still long from the green bullish engulfing ER buy signal on October 25th. We made a higher high above the resistance area, but it's not holding very well. Market is now up a very small 0.25. Nothing to speak of. Low and last. Below where it opened back below some resistance that it managed to get through, but it's the reverse of a ping pong ball being pushed underwater. This is a balloon that popped up a little bit and popped and pulled right back down again. So I'm thinking that this could be the high day and we're gonna end up getting stopped out of the trade and make some money. Okay, and the major support area would be tested next. It could turn into something a lot more bullish longer term, but I have to think about the trade that's going on right now. Next, OJ. I screamed bloody, bloody murder October 31st about the bearish engulfing. We had a couple of huge down days and then an extra one to get oversold in. And that was only two days ago. Yesterday was the first day up. And today we rallied enough to take a profit and got stopped out of the trade. It does not change my expectation that this high on October 31st is a long-term major huge top. The day the market topped out 
October 31st of this year. That date could go down months and months and months, if not maybe years from now as the high. It kind of has some similarities to the top in the wheat market when the war started. And of course, wheat's at the lowest low since, well over a year later, unfortunately. Now, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm out of the trade, but I'm still bearish opinion-wise. Remember, I'm separating my opinion from the automated ER strategy technique. You can change the inputs in the strategy if you want and be faster, quicker to take profits or losses and slower to take what could be and has been many times larger profits, but you're risking more in the process. This is very overbought. We got way up into the 85 area. And I think, and I'm looking across the last several months, every time it got up to like 85 approximately, we ended up with some sort of a high. Here it is. I think it's going to come again. We have almost had a lower low today. And if we do before the close, and then it stays simply lower than yesterday's closing price, this will turn red, like that one turned red, like that one turned red, and that, and that, and that. It would obviously be an ER sell signal, but I need to get below yesterday's low. Let's see what happens later. Coffee. Inside trading range, doji, doesn't mean too much. A little bit of a dip down. If it can hold its support, which is a little lower than yesterday's lows, okay. It may be starting something more significant to the upside. But you're kind of between a rock and a hard spot here. You got quite a bit of support below you, everything from July. But earlier than July, most of the price range was above where the market topped out yesterday and where it is approximately today. So it's kind of in a an area here. I'm going to wait and see what happens. Next, sugar to sweet. Almost an outside down day, bearish engulfing, but it's not quite overbought. Therefore, it will not turn red. I think it's going to have a minor correction down, a little bit more on the downside, but just not very sure about this. It has been able to make higher highs again and again, but not particularly aggressively, and I don't see any whopping follow through to the upside. Yeah, a little bit of a dip and maybe back up to new highs. Next, cotton the rag, oversold and substantially so. In fact, this is the most oversold it's been for a year. Now, guess what? We're right smack at the bottom, maybe a hair under, a support area. I can actually afford to lower this just a tiny bit because these lows matter. And we're there again. And the most oversold condition for a year, it's bottoming out. I think cotton is about to rally back up. Oh, I suppose to 83 and a third and maybe even back up to 89 again. Next chart is our E-mini. It's, it's hanging on. There's nothing particularly fantastic about today's rally or and or yesterday's for that matter, but it just keeps on chugging up. This again is the seventh day up since the low day, since the October lows. You have a great trading day. Manana.